Good afternoon, this is Isaac with Programmable Audio for episode 9 of Mix with a Noob. Today we're going to cover the mix topic, mixing through a plugin or setting, and the Reaper feature, which actually is one of its default uh, plugins, is Reverb. So let's get started. So the mix concept I want to talk about briefly, let me pull up my uh, the FX on my master chain here. These are plugins that you've added to the master track which will affect the audio right before it goes out to the speakers. Or if you're doing a rip, if you're making an MP3 or a wave out, this is the last channel the audio goes through before the final output. So they call it the master channel. Um, so what I have here is just some basic EQ to kind of make the mix bearable to listen to. And also, the reason I have my EQ set like this, um, and this is just an aside, it has nothing to do with the topic. For some reason, all of the captures that I got, let's look at, let's look at one of the Let's look at the EQ on the guitar briefly here. For some reason, my captures, I guess I could have just shown it in the master. My, my waves all look like this. I have this huge boost from, you know, 50 up to 1,000, up to 1K. So there's something, it was something about the way I EQ'd the board which on the Mackie board I was using I had everything as neutral as I could get it and so maybe that board just so happens to color the the signal a certain way or maybe I had I may have had some EQ settings on the master part of the board so each channel that I was using I would set the EQ as neutral as I could get it I would I would try to make the signal you know colorless so I wasn't boosting highs or mids or lows I just had them sort of straight down the middle but this is what came out so to try to combat combat that I have this cut here across this frequency and I have a boost over here because everything's real low down here everything's just just drops off so I don't know what I did wrong again it's it's a beginner thing that happens uh, and I've had I had a friend look at my my project one of my projects and he noticed right away he said your your EQ curve looks really weird you know it's not and he showed me a stamp a reference track and anyway that's why i have this eq set like that on the master channel i have a multi-band compressor so i can kind of tame the lower end here and this one i want to talk about briefly this is not the plugin that we're we're featuring in this tutorial but i do want to discuss this master limiter a limiter what a limiter does is it acts kind of like a compressor except it doesn't let any signal through after the threshold. So when the, when you set the threshold, everything, all the signal that slams up against it gets completely cut off. Um, so the reason I have this turned on, I mix into these three plugins. And this is something that I heard, I'm gonna directly cite or, or um, what's the word you wanna use? Directly, um, attribute or or I want to give the credit to why I do this the the props or the um, man there's a word I'm trying to think of to, to describe exactly what I'm saying but this is not an idea that I came up with this is something that Gr Glenn Fricker from the Spectre Media Group YouTube channel he's the producer who yells at people he's real outlandish and you know he he bashes on musicians for being unprepared to come into the studio, that's, that's him, he's entertaining, he's good, he knows what he's doing. He, what he continuously says, I've heard him say it at least 10 times, um, he says that you want to mix into your limiter all the time. And it kind of makes sense, the way he describes it is, at the end of the project, you're gonna put a limiter on there anyway, or the mastering engineer is, and it's going to make all the levels jump, okay? And I experienced this early on with mixing and I, I, I understand what he's saying. If you mix without the limiter and you set all your different levels and things, and then you turn the limiter on at the end, all of, 
all of the sound, the levels and stuff change. Everything changes. So you might as well mix into the limiter so that you know, so you're making changes that are appropriate for the final output. Okay, so that's the concept I wanna talk about is turning a plugin on early in the mix or in a portion of the mix phase so that you can hear the changes that you make and you don't have to then turn the plug in on again later. Turn the plug in on, that's so awkward to say. Activate the plugin and then tweak changes to it after you've already made a bunch of changes to the uh, the track. So um, the plugin I wanna talk about that I wanna feature is Reaper's Reverb, okay? Now, what I've done, um, I haven't messed with the snare at all. Let's listen to the snare briefly. Okay, actually I did, I did put a transient controller on, let's get rid of that. All right, so I have a gate here on my snare. Oops, I have guitar and snare going, that's okay. All right, so snare to me is one of the, the most important voices in the song. Um, if you ever listen to a song really low, which is a good thing in mixing, oftentimes what you're hearing is the vocals right on top, which you should, the snare drum kind of popping off to give you like a, a meter or a cadence, and then you'll hear some of the other elements of the song kind of floating around in the background, some cymbal, maybe guitar. A lot of times you lose bass and kick and stuff when the volume's real low because they just don't, those sound waves require, you know, m movement, actual physical movement of air to, uh, to translate into sound waves for your ears. So um, the snare, when you listen to something real quietly, that snare, the way it mixes with the vocals, the way it mixes with everything else is so important to the way the song comes out. If you make tweaks to the snare, you can actually change, you can almost change the way a song sounds as far as its genre, uh, genre, as far as if you switch it from something, you know, snappier and, and not very much reverb and just crisp, it might be more like rock or pop, but then you, you stretch it out, you give it some reverb, you mellow out the, the nose of it, the transient, then it kind of like, it starts to blur over into like reggae and. So the sound of the snare is super important to your mix, the, the outcome of your mix, all right? So I've been kind of pushing this off, but at this stage, I think I've got some of my other elements sort of locked down, and I'm gonna do vocals last, because that's just my process. Uh, once I have all the instruments and everything where I want them, then I, then I kind of adjust the, the vocals accordingly. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna add some reverb to the snare. Now, what I just had on there was called the transient controller, and I'm gonna actually put that back on there. If I just type in TRA and there it is in the middle, you could actually put TRA and S transient, there it is. Tran this is a, also stock, comes with, Re with Reaper. This is a good one. This lets you dial up the attack and the sustain of the snare to kind of shape it to where you want it to be. So let's listen. Here's, here's when I bump up the attack. Okay, it changes it, it makes it crisper, it just, it gives it a boost. If I put the sustain up, you'll hear, oops, okay, so that, wow, we, um, what I'm gonna need to do is turn down the signal on this because we, we overblew, actually, I probably shouldn't mess with it there, I'm gonna pull this output down. We drove so much signal through that it, the, the channel auto muted. It said, nope, you're hurting my ears, I can't do that. <laughs> So it, what it does is it mutes the channel and it unsolos it and the rest of the mix comes up but the snare is now gone. Okay, so I guess giving it that much attack and sustain really boosts the signal. That's interesting, I did not know that. Didn't know it could be that aggressive. Okay, so let's give it. Now one thing to note, th there's some phase going on with these snares and I can hear it because I've heard it before so I'm gonna flip the phase of one of them and I will go into this in detail in another video, um, but quickly here I'm gonna fix this problem because I do hear phase. It, it just, all it means is that the, the signal, it just sounds weak and like, okay, we try, we try those two and we're gonna try. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's turn the. I'm going to turn both of these off and just listen to the raw signal here. All right, so it's actually kind of hard to hear the phase. Like it, it sounds, it does sound like there's something off. I think what it is is I just don't have a whole lot of signal in here. But if we zoom into these snare hits, you can kind of see they're not. Yeah, they're not all the way out of phase. They're not. They're actually lined up fairly well here. So it's not a phase thing. It it, it to my ear it sounded like maybe it was, but it looks like these are okay. See the peaks. If the peaks. Are, are lined up with each other roughly you won't have any phase if this was shifted so that my let's say my zero crossings were hitting where the peaks are on the other wave we'd have some phase going on i mean there might still be some of it but just flipping the phase doesn't improve it instantly to my ear this is with with the bottom snare flipped you know what it is i remember now i actually flipped the phase in the recording project and the reason it doesn't show up here is that this is a mix project so if you're recording in the studio you want to flip the phase of one of the snare drums i believe typically the bottom snare mic you flip the phase of it so if you think about that you have a top mic and a bottom mic the snare the drumstick hits the top head and it creates this explosion of sound waves right like this detonation the top the signal from the top head goes in instantly into the top mic and that same signal goes down and it hits the resonant head and then it continues through the resonant head and hits the bottom mic and the resonant head is is affected and then you know begins vibrating responds to that hit and it sends out its own you know answer wave and that goes into the bottom one and that goes in the top one so if you have them both set to the exact same phase they're out of they'll be out of phase because there's just that slight delay for when the um, the the drumstick hits the top head. There's just a slight delay because the top mic's that much closer to, you know the the bottom snare mic might be say a snare drum is about yay thick, and let's say you have your mic about that same distance away, maybe less. So there's about that much distance between the top head and the bottom mic. And then there's maybe, depending on how you place your top mic, but there's only maybe this much distance. So just that small amount of distance because sound travels very quickly. So small amounts of distance can affect, and we're talking about milliseconds here. So this is not quite out of phase because I remember flipping the phase of the bottom mic during tracking. So let's move on. It, it sounds okay. I think what it is is it's just I just don't have a whole lot of signal in here. Let's let's hear when we when he starts really slamming on this. Yeah, see he it clipped right here. Maybe there's four that little mini roll. Yeah, actually I can't I can't quite decide. Yeah, it's definitely better with the, the phase off. I think what I probably am seeing here is that during certain parts, maybe I gave the snare a little more gain because I could tell. Like this one here, this signal is just so low. But that's okay because we can boost it. We can do things in the, in the software that will help boost it. So anyway, back to where we were. That was kind of a little tangent. Um, all right, so we're going to turn on the gate again, and we're going to turn on this transient controller. So if you adjust the sustain, it, it makes the notes shorter or longer. I'm gonna try. Let's switch these. All right. So what, I turn the gate off and I put the sustain up. I feel I feel foolish because now we're we're doing transient controller as the plug-in. <laughs> it can be a dual plug-in episode. I don't really care. It's cuz I'm a noob. All right, so let's let's dial the attack and the sustain up and see what it sounds like.
Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of clicky sound now. It's come that's maybe coming off of the hi hat. That's better. Now the thing is, we've bumped the transient up, so our attack. See, this attack one millisecond might even be. See if we can do this half a millisecond. Will it take it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so just what we're doing here is we're adjusting the transient to make it sharper, to have more attack. But then if we're if we're slamming it up against a gate, the gate might be cutting off all that we added. So you need to adjust these two in tandem. You need to adjust them together. All right, so I've got it set roughly where I want it. Um, and again, I apologize for deviating off of the um, assigned plugin topic. So let's get to reverb. Here we go. Type in REA and hit V. And we have our reverb, reverberate, revo code, and revoice. These are all based on, well, the revoice and revo code are for voice. But we have reverb and reverberate. We're going to use reverb here. This is a super simple yet powerful plugin. What this lets you do, you can see there's nothing here. Um, there's, I mean, there's some settings and stuff you can mess with, but you need to add something in here. See, it says impulse response generation. So what you want to do is hit add and you're going to go, for, you could actually, what you can do if you don't have a set of reverb impulses and I'll show you where to get a good set. It's the one I use and they're fantastic. Um, reverb generator is sort of like the stock one that, that Reaper has. And you can do this. In fact, that's what's on my, uh, my vocals. Let's go look at vocals briefly and I promise to keep this short. All right, we look at vocal bus here or vocal verb. Here it is. So here's what I have on, on the vocals. In case you've been wondering, the vocals are not raw. They have some reverb. Otherwise, they, they just sound so raw that it's it doesn't doesn't even when you're mixing it doesn't sound very good. So I have reverb the the stock reverb in here. But today what I want to do is I want to put an impulse in there. So let's go ahead and remove this. But like I said, if you want to if you just want to throw some reverb on quickly. And, and tweak a couple of settings and get it sounding okay, you can just toss this reverb generator in there, which is great. Let's remove it. Okay, so again, we have our, our choices here. You can do echo. File is what we want, which will load an impulse file. You can do filter, low pass or high pass. You can do normalizer, reverb generator, reverse, trim, gain, and stretch. So this, this is actually another sort of Swiss Army knife plugin. I mean, look at all the things you can add here. Um, we're going to go file and it's going to ask you, well, where do you want to get the file, right? Immediately goes to where we're going to get it. We're going to go to this folder I downloaded here. It's called Big G's Lexicon. And in this folder, we have a bunch of them. Okay. And these are named the way that the reverb impulse was created or the, yeah, I guess it's either the way it's created or the description of it. So if we read through some of these, these top ones I believe those are probably like model names of old reverb machines or something a plate plate is where the sound strikes something flat and hard like a plate auto park means like an auto like a imagine like a factory where they make cars this is like a huge echoing reverb back slap big bottom brick wall buck ram okay so you can go down here Reverb, an, or an impulse is basically, it tells the plugin, it gives it a characteristic of echoes. Reverb has to do with, if you're standing in a completely empty field and you record something, it sounds so dry and empty because the sound waves go out and they never come back. They might hit the ground slightly and come up, but it's not even noticeable. When you're in a room like I am right now, any sound wave that goes out, immediately begins hitting surfaces and coming back to you. And that's what call that's what reverb is is that's why we call it reverb because it's short for reverberation. So the sound waves hit stuff and they come back in and it and it gives character to the the sound, okay? What these are rebound. See a lot of these, okay, if you had something like music club, what that is is it's describing the size of the room or the type of room. Metallica is probably just them Someone found out the type of reverb that Metallica used and they copied it. 
Um, so it's either going to be like the description of a room or a physical reverb device, which is like a friend of mine on you or on um, Facebook built one. Um, you know, you take uh, what did he do? He he. So what he has is he has I think it's a plate reverb. Is this big metal plate, and he actually like connects he connects a speaker to it. He like with magnets or he welds it to the plate, and then he plays sound through that, and the sound then hits that plate like the plate becomes a kind of speaker uh, you know a, a vibrating surface that that puts out sound and then you capture that sound and you use some type of software that tells you like the difference between the source you know the sound that you put in through the plate and the difference that came out and whatever that difference is however that plate is affecting it that becomes an impulse so this is like a little tiny file that you're loading that tells the plugin how do we affect the sound that's going to come out the other end in what way okay so because we're using snare let's just go ahead and get this snare plate okay easy quick place to start and you can see here it gives you a sort of physical description of a, a picture of how the sound wave kind of echoes out um, and there's no there's no key here i kind of wish there was like a key to tell you these colors but you can see here initially this is the initial sound and it's all bright purple and bright red kind of like you know mad and then it it, it transitions into blue so this is like more mellow so 2.58 seconds 4800 to channel max okay so this is giving you information about how this reverb you know how it's built um, and then you can actually adjust from there you can adjust see if we move this pre preverb pre reverb okay i'm gonna leave it at zero though all right and then you have these other options which i never really i know these are actually helpful to use a, uh, i've used these a couple of times if you want the reverb to be really really light and we talked last episode in episode eight we talked about lightly affecting using effects to to a very very slight degree so that I call it kissing the effect, you know, kissing the track. You don't want it to be just laid on there. In some cases you would, but not always. So anyway, this by default sets to negative 12. And I know from experience, this is going to be way too much reverb. It's just going to make this snare sound crazy. So let's listen to it. Okay, so that's what I mean by crazy. It changes the snare so much that it just like completely alters the sound of it. So what we want to do is we want to dial this back, okay? And I usually have this, I want to, I'll start at like negative 30. And again, that's roughly like around the edge of where your, hear, your ear can hear something. It's like a, you know, real quiet sound. All right, so there you can hear, you can still hear the snare. You know what, let's boost this because this is driving me crazy because this is such a low signal. <laughs> so I'm going to use refer, which we talked about. I lost track of which episode. <laughs> I think it was probably six, I would guess six. If you go back in my episodes, we use this, this plugin. And I'm just gonna boost the output of this by let's say four dB and see how that sounds. Yeah, that's a little louder. Okay. So let's go back to our plugin here. Now one thing you can do, and this is another cool feature of of reapers plugins you have this little dial up here we haven't talked about any of this stuff up here we did briefly touch on parameter there's a button here this parameter modulation there's all these other tools up here one of them is this saturation button and this basically whatever plugin you're highlighted on this turns the level of it up or down there's also a handy bypass button right here too so the what you can do you can experiment between these two you could actually drench it in reverb and let's see what that sounds like if we put this all the way up and let's just get the dry signal out of there completely all right that's i mean that's just you you've completely killed it right you, it's now that could be useful for if you're doing some kind of experimental song or something that could be great i don't know why i go like this like i'm just like it's like my gesture of like oh if you want to just go crazy <laughs> 
if you want to have a snare sound in there that's just crazy overpowering, you can do that. Now what now what we can do here, because we have this as full as, as much as it'll go, we can dial this one down. Let's let's put it to zero and then we'll creep it up to 5% and see hear what that sounds like. And to creep it up by one by at a time, I'm gonna hold down control. Okay, so that's another option right there. That's 5%, and even that's too much. Like this is just, it's just going crazy. So let's go to this, this uh, drop down here. We can actually do apply negative 18 decibel gain and see how, see how it changes the impulse, the, the physical, the, the chart up here. So now it's telling you, like, if you look at the difference between the little white area, which is that initial splash of sound, you know, it's it's really cut it down. Let's go back to normal. See how wide it is and bright? So this is like, when I see this, what I imagine is, if you ever watch, like, superhero movies or TV shows, and they have characters like Daredevil is a perfect example, or even like Neo in The Matrix, right? somebody who is blind or like doesn't see normally but their senses or something else about them like in neo's case he's like the he's the one or he can see the the world the artificially constructed world with dig, a digital readout of characters so this this is almost like that with the sound like this is how daredevil would see the sound um it's giving you a visual representation of the sound so like at first that snare hit is like boom and it's white hot and it's so loud and it causes all these reflections around it and then as you trail off towards two and a half seconds later it cools off into nothing right so that's just a quick simple way to look at it and think of it so let's change this to apply the negative 18 decibel gain let's see what that sounds like we're going to put this saturation back up to 100 percent all right so that that cuts down on some of that that real bad slapping right so that's another thing you can do is you can you can experiment with these. Here's a deprecated no SRC gain. And I think I want to say SRC means source. I don't know for sure. All right, that, that's also too way too much. Deprecated no source gain with negative 18 dB cut. Deprecated normalized to zero dB. Wow, and that's just way overkill. And I apologize about that sound if that's bad in your ears. All right, deprecated, normalized to negative 18 dB. That one sounds okay to me. So let's dial this back to negative 30. And you can you can do a combination of this stuff. In the early on, what I would do is I would just leave this saturation at 100%, and I would tweak this up and down. And I would always go generally somewhere from 30 to negative 25. I would, you know, within that range would be just enough. And I've heard, the advice I've heard, and I wish I could credit, I think that was that, I think that was the word I was trying to look, uh, trying to figure out earlier was credit. I wanted to credit Glenn Fricker for telling me to mix through a plugin. There you go. <laughs> so I wish I knew who to credit to say this, but if you can hear the reverb, it's too much. I've heard that before. So you want the reverb to just lightly smooth the sound out. You don't want it to be like, boom, a bunch of reverb. Unless you're looking for a certain sound in a certain genre, that's fine. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, the problem, what I did is I left the dry down so we don't have any dry signal. So that's why it was so quiet. So here we go. All right, so you can barely hear it, right? It's almost not even there. So let's go to negative 25. Now we're starting to hear it. That's pretty good. All right. Um, I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply a lesson that we had from the last tutorial, and I'm going to actually create a snare verb track here. So I'm going to highlight snare. Hit Control T. I'm going to call this snare verb. Because one of the things I want to be able to do is EQ the, uh, the the verb by itself, the reverb by itself, because you don't want a whole lot of low end. This is what I've heard. You don't want a whole lot of re low end in your reverb because low end, if you do a lot of reverb and like left and right type stuff or in the low end, it really confuses the ear. 
you want that low end to just be clean and punchy. All right, so real quickly, using another lesson from last tutorial, we can send, what we wanna do is send everything to the snare verb and then have that go back to the snare bus. All right, so top snare. We wanna send these to our snare verb. One, two, three, four, and then we need that we need the snare verb to go back to the snare bus like that. I think that's how we do it if I learned anything last time. And so what we want to do, we want to take this reverb off. And here's another quick um, tip. You can actually, what I want to do is I'm going to copy selected FX by right clicking. So highlight the one you want. Now I know I want to remove it from this track. So we're going to do a two step. I'm going to copy it, copy selected FX. And then you can actually remove here, selected FX, or delete, just while it's highlighted, do remove. But remember I copied it, so I still have it there. And the, and the benefit of that is that I don't, have to re, I don't have to go through all those settings again. All right, so when you go to put a brand new one, you just hit cancel here, and you, then you have your plugin, you know, you, you bypass that um, search feature. So we go to edit, paste effects, and there it is. Let's listen. All right. Yep, so I'm getting signal. Oh, see that? See how ugly it gets? How quickly it gets really bad? Now, one quick thing. If you record in a good drum room where the reverb, like it's designed to hold drums and it, the sound is dialed in like it was designed to record drums there there i go again with the <laughs> um you may not have to add any reverb to your snare the sound of the drums in the room might be exactly what you want and they mix perfectly well with with everything else in this case it was recorded in like a concrete room with not you know no nice characteristics of, of reverb just not an ideal drum setting so we're adding we're adding reverb in in a way to make it sound normal natural like you'd hear at a concert or something you know so if i did this right we can we can dial the snare verb down and we're gonna we're gonna lose all the reverb yep or mute it all right so that's pretty much it that's that's a, a good starting point let's listen to the whole drum bus now Oops, without soloing that. All right, so remember we boosted the snare. I'm okay with that for now, but what that did, what I'm hearing is that now our ambient bus is really buried. And if you remember from, oh, it's been so many of these now. I mean, it's not that many, but <laughs> trying to recall which one it was is, is tough. I really do want to be able to send people to the correct one. I think it was number two <laughs> um, where we dialed in our, yeah, rough rough mix, I believe was episode two, maybe episode three. Uh, the ambient bus, we, we dialed this quite a bit back to negative 12. Let's give it a 2 dB boost to negative 10 and see how that sounds. Negative 10. There we go. See, we brought the symbols up a little. All right, and again, I'm going to repeat the advice I've given several times that I've heard. We're not mixing, we don't want to mix that snare verb in a vacuum, meaning we got it put in place and we kind of dialed it so it sounded okay by itself but we're never going to hear that snare by itself ever um, unless you have a, a song where specifically you're going to do like a snare solo or something here i go with the hands something um i mean there are exceptions to the rule i'm saying where an instrument may be heard by itself if the song calls for it you know so it's not a ironclad 100 percent all the time rule but 
for the most part, don't mix in a vacuum. Don't assume, okay, I've made the changes. This is good. Let's call it good and move on. You want to go back and tweak your settings in. So we're going to do it to the drum, the complete drum picture. And then we're going to turn on the full mix and see how it sounds in the full mix. So here we go with the drums. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dial this up and see how it, if it improves it or makes it worse. Yeah, that's see by by negative thirteen. That's terrible. To me, that just sounds unnatural. Let's bring it back down. Maybe negative twenty. And remember, we have we have this other setting on here, which we can experiment with rem either removing. So let's put it back to normal and see. This is what's really going to happen here is the. Uh, let me. Let me pause the playback. I feel like I shouldn't just let the playback run and run while we're hearing. And I want to just repeat it one section. I want it to go through the whole song. Remember, we changed this to deprecated, normalized to negative 18 dB, which you can see really deprecates the initial um, splash of sound there. So let's put this back to normal. And I, I almost guarantee now it's going to be way too much reverb, especially it's at negative 20. Um, and to my ear, usually negative 30, between negative 25 and negative 30 is good. So this negative 20 is going to be too much. Oops, let's go back to here. Yeah, see, it's too much. Let's dial it back to negative 25. Oops. Oh, and the whole reason we did this snare verb was EQ. And, be, and the reason I noticed that is I'm, I'm starting to hear it. I've heard it enough. That and we're going to do the re EQ before the uh, verb, so that the signal that hits the reverb plugin is already EQ'd correctly. So let's start with let's say below 200. You don't want to do too drastic because then you lose characteristic of the drum sound. I always forget you can just type it in there. 200. All right. All right. So again, let's. I'm going to solo the the snare so you can hear what that this is without EQ with and actually let's give this like a high end boost ah that's all right that's too okay so here's a perfect example when I turn off the rest of the drum mix that reverb sounds like just way too much um, and so I might be tempted to just keep cutting it, keep cutting it. But then I turn the whole mix back on and it's not nearly enough. So again, don't mix into a vacuum mix with the elements that will will eventually go, you know, mix with the entire elements. You can go step by step snare against you could do snare against kick. Let's try that snare bus kick bus. So the ambient bus now is completely gone. We add that back in there. All right, let's turn on just the drum bus. I can tell now it is definitely too much reverb. Remember what I said when you when you boost, and I don't remember what, what episode it was again either. When you boost certain frequency, if you boost somewhere, you're affecting it somewhere else. So you do have to be careful. you're boosted somewhere then you're you're cutting it off somewhere else so man that's that's awful when we get to the that little point at the end here that just really so that may be something that we have to automate out at the near the end when he hits these this series of four notes before he we change parts it just makes that reverb just go insane and it's 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 not good to the ear let's listen to it it makes that sound um, okay so actually let me one more time I don't think I'm happy with that Oops. The snare bird. there it is remember this EQ is just you're just affecting the reverb maybe we can let's reverse it 
This is what's great about being a noob. You can say one thing one minute and then switch. So you can kind of hear it like coughing. I don't mean the Pokemon. <laughs> uh, you can hear the reverb coughing. It's, it makes this, you know, and that, that is the color you're trying to add. That's the, the, the um, now the other thing, if you're not happy with snare plate, you can actually try, let's try something completely different. Let's go echo plate and look at how different the uh, impulse readout is. Let's try, let's give it small, you know what, let's try that car park we talked about earlier. Auto park, there it is. That's a lot of reverb. It's supposed to imitate a giant space, a, a massive factory type thing, I believe. Anyway, that's what I imagine when I see auto park. Uh, let's see here, inside out. Like I picked snare plate because you think, oh, it's designed for snare, but it may not be right for this mix. And that's fine. All right, so that sounds okay. Now, again, it sounds okay to my ear, but we're never gonna hear the drums all by themselves, so let's add the other elements. And we can bypass it. You know what? There is something going on with my drums I think, I think our bass and guitar are much, much higher than the, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna actually set this, because we had made all these cuts early on, I'm gonna set this to zero dB. Yeah, that's probably more like where we wanna be. Drums might be a little bit more higher than the, so let's go back, let's set this back to uh, negative two. All right, so let's bypass it. I don't know for sure if I'm bypassing it correctly. Let's see. If you ever can't tell if you're bypassing something correctly, just exaggerate it so you can clear, clearly hear it and then test it. Okay, so again in the full mix. See how that's just way too much? Here's another thing you can do just while you're mixing. You know what? Let's switch to a let's switch to a place with vocals because oftentimes I feel like the snare sound and the vocals play off of each other. If you listen the next time you hear like a pop song, listen to how the words fall against the snare. You know, with it are they are they hitting the ones with the snare or twos or whatever it is? Or are they playing off the snare? Like it's it's a huge thing. So if the snare and the vocals sound okay together, you're you're going in the right direction. So that's way way too much, right? Obviously, 
Let's start backing it down. Interesting. Let's do drum bus solo again. Like to me, that's too much snare. Or too much of uh, uh, reverb on the snare. Um, like I said, I usually mix it like negative 25. Let's hear that. So it probably has to do with the characteristic of the verb itself. But this actually sounded okay, like as far up as eight. That's interesting. To me, that's very interesting. And by now you've heard that so many times you probably want to hear the next part. I know I do. My ear is going, come on, let him say the next part. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to let this play out and let me turn it down so I can talk over it, I guess. All right, so that's, uh, we, we mixed into a plugin. Um, we put the reverb in place and we tweak the snare. Um, actually, we didn't, I didn't quite do it that way. So, um, anyway, again, I'm a noob. So we mixed, actually, did we mix through the plugin at all? Yeah. Um, I guess what I probably wanted to do was now, just briefly before the video, let me see how much time. We're at 45 minutes, wow. Okay, it doesn't matter. If you've, if you've hung around this long, you'll, you'll go to the end. Now I'm gonna mess with my um, transient over here and maybe my gate to get a different sound. So if we turn the attack, we, yeah, see, no attack means there's, not, there's nothing to hit that reverb. Get some sustain. See, that really bumps up that the tail of that reverb. Okay, so this is more of what I mean, all right? We dialed in our reverb, and I think, actually, I honestly feel like it's too much. And I, again, I'm bouncing back and forth between it's too much or it sounds okay based on whether I'm listening to it in the vacuum, you know, just with the drums, which isn't quite in the vacuum, but um, when I listen to the snare with the drums, I have a different impression than when I turn the full mix on and I can hear the snare against bass, guitar, and vocals. Um, so I, I dialed the reverb down to negative 12. And now I'm gonna mess with these, these settings on the transient controller. Too much and it just like I'm not sure if it's now it's slamming into the it's probably that it's it's hitting maybe the compressor too hard let's see here yeah see if you bump this so I opened up the compressor on the drum bus that's what I'm looking at over to my right here so if you the more you bump these this attack up the more you're just the compressor is working harder so at a, at a certain point you're not shaping the sound anymore it's, it's pointless. All right, I'm gonna go back into the mix now and we'll, we'll tweak the sound of the snare a little bit. You know what I want is I want more, I'm gonna dial back my kick and ambient. Let's go by a couple of dB, let's. I'm, I'm not hearing enough snare for my ear. And this one we dialed. Let's see. So I believe I put it to negative four. Was that negative six? I don't remember now. I'm just going to dial it in. Too quiet. negative eight all right negative eight all right so now I'm going to turn the whole mix back on and 
No, that sustain definitely brings that, that reverb out too much. You know what? It looks like our our compressor I think is working too hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the threshold here. There we go. To me that improved the sound markedly. That that was good. And you can hear those you can hear the cymbals pumping a little. I'm upping the sustain on the snare. And you can hear it change the characteristic of it. If you take that attack percent down to nothing, it's, it completely takes the guts out of the snare. All right, that sounds good, but I now, because we, I brought the um, kick and ambient sound down now, I think I have too much snare. So I'm actually gonna back this off. And again, rather than bring those other two up, I'm backing this one off to preserve headroom. Okay, it makes more sense to back this one down and give yourself room to go up with everything else instead of bringing the other two back up and getting closer to zero. All right, that's something that I've been trying to practice a lot. All right, so that's it. That's the end of the episode. Uh, let's recap. We we added uh, reverb, the the stock plugin from Reaper, spelled R E A, reverb, V E R B. We put an impulse in there. We swapped impulses around until we found something that sounded okay, and we mixed through the plugin, which is we talked in the very beginning of the episode about mixing through your master limiter. Um, again, something I got from the SMG YouTube channel. The producer, Glenn Fricker, has said that many times. You don't want to mix and then turn your limiter on because it jumps all your sound around. Um, so we took that philosophy and we put it into mixing the snare through reverb so that at the very end there, I was adjusting the attack and sustain of the snare while it was already affected by reverb instead of trying to tweak all those settings and then apply reverb and then come back. Um, so that was the, the core concept for today was mixing through a plugin. Um, thank you very much for watching. I know this was a longer episode. I hope you enjoyed it or learned something from it. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. And as always, I'm going to beg for feedback because that is super valuable to me. Even if you want to be critical, that's fine. I can use it to build. Um, anything is great. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, I'm back. I know I already ended the video, but I forgot one detail. During the recording, I said that I would show you where to get that pack of impulse files. Um, and I forgot to mention that at the very end. So I have the website open here. And I also have the um, link to it here in this little sticky. So it's bedroomproducersblog.com. And it's just the date that he put it out. And then it's called Free Lexicon 4801 Impulse Responses. I'll put the link in the video description so you can click right on it. And if you go to this page, you just hit start download here. It'll be a zipped file and you unzip it. And it'll be a folder full of these impulse files, which no other program really can understand it except the soft music software so you have to point reaper at it initially and then as you saw once reaper realizes okay there's a bunch of them in this folder then you can just use the drop down to switch between them um, so i read through this a little bit and it turns out the these um, impulse responses actually come from this lexicon 480 factory preset so it's a, a device um, so this, they're actually calling it a legendary reverb unit. And if you, there's a video on this page that will explain the device will go into it. So again, I'll put it in the show notes in the video description so you can go and download those same uh, impulse.
impulse uh, reverb impulses. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye.